Oh, dang, we get a chapter 11? Okay. Endings and beginnings. It's a good title. Why is she sleeping so much? She was healed with magic. Shouldn't she be better? Even with magic healing, there's at least some recovery time. It uses a lot of your energy, so she's going to need sleep. And that's not taking into consideration the amount of energy she expended to release that spell. We still haven't even worked out how she did that. I felt a warm hand on my hair. I struggled to wake up enough to see who it was. A pair of worried gold eyes flashed before me. She'll sleep. Don't worry. Everything's going to be okay now. And with that, everything faded and I slept again. And now it's November 4th. Alright, well I lived. I opened my eyes and abruptly sat up as everything that had happened came crashing back. I looked around wildly, then patted at my abdomen. And carefully rolled my injured shoulder. No pain. I frowned slightly, recalling the voices I'd been hearing in my sleep. Someone healed me. I picked my phone up off the bedside table, surprised to see that I'd apparently slept for more than a day. It was Thursday, just before lunch. My brow furrowed as I tried to remember exactly what had happened. Ugh. I let out a soft groan as I rolled out of bed. My head was still a bit woozy, and while I didn't hurt anymore, I still felt a bit stiff. I stretched and yawned. Whew. Nora! You're up! Spencer? Bro! He was across the room in an instant, pulling me into a tight hug. Are you wolfish? Oof! He's hugging me. Spencer is hugging me. I was so shocked that it actually took a minute to hug him back. I'm so glad you're okay. I... am too? He pulled away, scrubbing at his eyes. You were just... sleeping. And wouldn't wake up. Mom and Dad are gone. And I couldn't tell them what was... Wait! How's Grandpa? He's doing better. But Mom and Dad probably won't be home for another day or two. And... And... Everything else? Danny? Sean and Derek? Danny's here. Downstairs. He was, um, suspended for a couple of days because of the fight at school. <laughs> but he's okay. Just kinda scraped up. Elliot. He had a dislocated shoulder. Sean was hurt pretty bad. But he's still already on his feet again. Velo's healed everyone, but I think he was mostly worried about you. I kind of vaguely remember that, I think. Are you okay? I mean... Wait! Your arm! That... a werewolf... Well... That's a bit complicated. We still don't know if I'm infected yet. Velos did a check with some kind of... thing. Thing? Some kind of magic device. He sat on my bed, pulling me over to sit next to him. Leaning over and resting his elbows on his knees, he sighed softly. <sighs> he thinks that you and I may actually have already had a fey heritage of some kind. From mom? What? Probably pretty far back. But that's likely what caused us to be so sensitive to... Well, supernatural things when we were children. That may be why we were targeted, too. Whoa, seriously? Anyway, it seems like the lycanthropy virus is struggling to take hold. Velus' hypothesis is that even spending only a few days in that fairy hill may have altered me enough to not be fully human anymore. So you won't get infected? We're not sure yet, but it seems like the prognosis is pretty good. Yes. 
Thank goodness. I mean, don't get me wrong. Nothing wrong with being a werewolf. I'm just not sure how mom and dad would take a fairy daughter and a werewolf son. The dog jokes would be endless. Dad would probably be out there trying to get you to play fetch. Very funny. It's weird that I was kind of relieved hearing that from Velos. I mean, about us already having that fairy heritage. I kept thinking... This was all my fault. That if I hadn't gone in that hill, you wouldn't have been dragged in. We wouldn't have moved. You wouldn't have ended up in the club. None of this would have happened. Spencer gave me a sad smile. It's pretty selfish to want to think that. It might have all happened anyway, even if I hadn't done that. It's not selfish. I mean, I got you back. That's the important part. Hi? Friends? There was a soft chattering near the window. We both looked over to see the brownie sitting there watching us. Yeah, I can see that, um, thing clearly now. I think it's worried about you. Well, that's good, I think. I set Milkhead out for it yesterday. And today. It seems to like me now. Congratulations. Anyway, I should go back down and tell Danny you woke up, and you should take a shower. You kind of smell bad. <sighs> Brothers. I shoved his shoulder. Well, excuse me, I was kidnapped and thrown in the dirt by angry werewolves, and I've been unconscious for a day. I think it's expected. He wiped at his eyes again and gave me a slight smile. We'll be downstairs. We were going to be stopping by that weird courtyard to let Allie know how you were doing. Since you're awake now, you should come too if you're up to it. I think so. Okay, take your time then. He left me standing there wondering how he'd found out about the courtyard. It looked like I had a lot of catching up to do even though I'd only been out for a day and a half. Did you leave me alone here to go gallivanting at the courtyard? I went to gather some clothes so I could quickly shower. Spencer wasn't exactly wrong about me not smelling pleasant. Alright, I'm just like, look. If a girl... The girl was not in her pajamas when this all happened. Whoever changed her into pajamas, could you not have, like, washed all the dirt off of her? You know, like, give her a little bit of a cleaning before you put her into pajamas? No? Is that too much to ask? Probably. Now that the fuzziness of sleep was fading, I tried to remember what had happened at the end of that fight. I kind of remember doing... something. Even now, I didn't know what. Magic, I guess. It was kind of scary. Kind of thrilling, really. It felt like I'd actually maybe helped out a little with saving everyone. I wonder what happened to Liam. Did I kill everybody? Did I knock them out? What did I do? That was a weird thought, though. And I could just be remembering wrong. I did kind of remember the whole power surge thing that happened when I got mad, though. That had been such a weird feeling. But if I'd somehow helped, then I was glad for that. Velos was definitely there at some point. He healed me while Ali held me and cried. I felt bad about that. I felt bad about worrying everyone again. Though to be fair, I didn't exactly ask to be kidnapped by a grumpy werewolf. I tipped my head back, letting the water soak my hair. Maybe things will finally go back to normal now. Um, privacy? <laughs> Mr. Brownie? <laughs> there was a very familiar crackling sound behind me, and I slowly looked back to see the brownie sitting on the faucet, swinging its feet slightly as it watched me. <laughs> I was pretty sure the others heard my scream downstairs. <laughs> ah, a little too friendly now. My hair was still a little damp when I got downstairs. 
And I was still fuming from that stupid brownie. I was surprised that Dandy was still with Spencer down in the kitchen. They were sitting at the table talking quietly when I entered. They looked thick as thieves, really. When did those two become friends? Danny looked up as soon as I reached the bottom step. He was immediately on his feet, and before I knew it, I was enveloped in a suffocating hug. I am so sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, mm. I tried to answer, but, well, my face was sort of being crushed into his chest. And while I had to admit that wasn't entirely a bad sensation, it was sort of cutting off my air supply. It didn't help that he was crushing my ribcage as well. I let him hug me for a few seconds before I pushed myself enough away to gasp for air. Danny! I can't breathe! The look of surprise on his face was almost comical. He instantly let me go and looked quite abashed. I'm sorry. I feel like I need to start keeping a record of how often you say that to me. And make you buy me a coffee every time we hit ten. Your coffee habit is starting to concern me. Danny, Danny. It's not a habit, it's a lifestyle. Just admit it. You're an addict. Shush you, you don't understand. Danny hugged me again, a little more gently this time. I'm so glad you're all right. Danny, please, don't be sorry, okay? You can't always blame yourself for this stuff. I just... Nope. I won't listen to it. Look, I agree with Nora on that, but... Can you guys get off each other? It's getting awkward. Danny instantly released me, stepping back. His face was a little red. Sorry. I kick at his shin slightly. Stop apologizing! Sorry? You... Ugh. Now I understand why you always complain about Allie flirting with me. Yeah, it's super creepy, isn't it? He let out an exasperated sigh. Ah, the others are waiting for us, you guys. Besides, I know how cranky you get when you're hungry. Well, I'm not to the point that I'm about to start jumping on people and eating their faces, but I am getting there. That would be a little unfortunate. Yeah, I'd definitely go for Spencer, though. Pretty sure I can take him out. He rolled his eyes. I almost liked it better when we weren't speaking. <laughs> Danny just laughed and headed to the front, and we followed behind him. Everything felt... weirdly normal. It shouldn't feel this normal after an epic werewolf brawl and being unconscious for so long. So what was that scream earlier about anyway? The brownie paid me a visit. While I was in the shower. Oh god. Yeah, don't think he's going to do it again. One hopes. He might try you next, Spencer. Allie and Elliot were both waiting for us when we got to the courtyard. I was a little worried about the massive amounts of skipping class that was going on. But I guess Velos was being le lenient considering we'd all nearly died or whatever. There were a lot of tearful reunions. I got slightly dogpiled. It was an experience. But when I asked for an update on the last day and a half, Allie made an excuse and dragged Elliot and Spencer away in a pretty epic display of lack of subtlety. I quietly watched the three of them leave, both amused and a little apprehensive. It's so weird knowing that Spencer knows about all of this. And that he's kind of... okay with it. Well, I think he's trying to be strong. For you. Or just to keep his sanity. The infection thing has to be weighing on him since we don't really... know yet. Yeah. He probably has his mo moments of going to pieces. I know I did. He's a good guy. I'm surprised, honestly. I'd kind of thought he was a jerk. We've talked a lot over the past day and a half. I couldn't come to school, and he was staying home to be with you. Well, he's not terrible. 
So what did happen with Rachel and them anyway? You mean after you single-handedly took out Liam and his entire group? Yeah, I... sort of vaguely remember that. Velos described it as a sort of power surge. A survival instinct thing. It was... terrifying. And pretty amazing. I don't think I even knew what I was doing. I just wanted to protect everyone. I wanted the fighting to stop. Oh, you stopped the fighting, that's for sure. They all just dropped to the ground in an instant. We were sort of terrified they were dead. I'm enormously relieved I didn't inadvertently murder people, I must say. Yeah, I was wondering about that. By the time Velas and the others got there, we'd kind of rounded everyone up. You were in bad shape, though. We were all pretty panicked. So Velo saved yelling at us until later. That was polite of him. Because Liam dragged you and Spencer into things, their clan is on pretty thin ice with the agency right now. And they were already having some internal struggles. So they're not in good shape at the moment. Oh? Because of us? The two of you may be cryptics, but you're fully integrated into human society. You're young, you've never caused issues, and your parents are human. It would cause a massive upset if something happened to you. So yeah, the agency is pretty ticked off that Liam broke... about half a dozen laws trying to hurt you. At this rate, if anyone in Rachel's clan sets one more foot out of line, the agency will probably call in a relocation force and make them leave the area. I doubt I'm worth the trouble anymore. Good. I'd hate to have to beat more of them up. I'm sure they wouldn't be thrilled about it either. Anyway, the agency handed Liam over to the council, and I imagine he's in big trouble. What about Sean? He was beat up pretty badly. I think Spencer said that Velos healed him? A bit. Werewolves have pretty fast regeneration. It would take more than being beat up to kill one of us. Dang it! You get all the useful traits. Why can't I have fast regeneration? This is so unfair. He just chuckled softly. <laughs> Sean and Derek left, by the way. Left? Without saying goodbye, those two are the rudest. Left the area. With the help of the agency. Not a forced relocation or anything. They just decided to go elsewhere. Try to find a clan that will accept them. Maybe try to start their own in a place where Sean's history isn't so widely known. Will they be okay? Yeah, well, I think the agency will make sure of that. Your work? I mean, they're werewolves. Isn't the agency supposed to not care? I... may have had something to do with it. I'm not surprised. I felt I owed them at least that much. In spite of everything. Spencer may have also made a fairly convincing argument. He was adamant that the agency take some responsibility. Insisted their complacency when it came to intervening in cryptic-only issues is what led to his maybe infection. He's pretty good at guilt-tripping people. Yeah, and he can be annoyingly difficult to argue with. For the record, Velos thinks things look pretty good for him. He doesn't think the infection will take root. I had mixed feelings on how to respond to that. Well, I'm glad. But it's not like being a werewolf is the end of the world. You know, as long as I never have to see him without pants. <laughs> I'm glad those two will be okay. I mean, I don't think they were bad guys, just in a bad situation. And they did help me out. Sort of. In a weird way. Yeah, they're not... They're not really bad guys. They were in a bad situation and made some terrible decisions. Hey. Well, hopefully they find some peace wherever they are. I agree. And I've decided to tell my family about my infection. You have? 
Spencer made a pretty convincing argument for that too, actually. Like you said, he's difficult to argue with. He talked to me a lot about how hard it is to really be a family if one person has a secret. Yeah, I guess he has first-hand experience with that. And I mean, he's been through a crazy amount the past couple of days, but he's just accepted you back. In spite of how bad things were between you. In spite of everything that happened to him. He even accepted me, which isn't what I expected at all. But I guess if he can do it, my family probably can as well. I think so. I mean, I'm sure they can. Anyone who rejects you just needs their butt kicked. And I'll volunteer. I think it'll be okay, but thanks for the offer. Nora, there's something else I'd like to do as well. What's that? Well, apologize for pushing you away. Or trying to. I shouldn't have done that. Hmm. Well, yeah. That is one I'm sorry I'm okay with. I was so... angry and frustrated. And let me tell you, timing? Not great. I know. It was wrong and stupid. I was just so scared, and it seemed like the right thing at the time. He reached across the table to take my hands. I flushed as he completely wrapped his hands around mine. I don't want to push you away. I'd actually like... us to be closer. Much closer. I want you to go out with me. If you're willing. I know I'm kind of a mess. But I feel like I'm kind of less of a mess when you're around. Please. If you're a mess, I don't even want to think about what a disaster I must be. Is that a yes? Well, technically it was a self-deprecating comment aimed at demonstrating how much you are not a mess. But... Yes. The answer is yes. I thought I'd be more embarrassed, but maybe it was just everything we'd gone through. I really didn't feel that weird about it. Danny set a hand on my cheek, his thumb sliding downward and grazing the corner of my mouth. I stared up into his eyes, so strange and inhuman, but so warm. And so, so beautiful. After all this time, still so beautiful. One day I really am going to be able to look at him without it feeling like someone set my face on fire. I'm glad we met. I'm glad you moved in next door. I'm sorry that it's been such a crazy ride, but... I'm glad this is where we ended up. I smiled up at him, covering his hand with mine. Me too. I hope you can handle dating a werewolf. Well, from what I've seen... It'll be fine. I mean, there's the pants issue and all. But if you don't run me into another ravine... I think it'll be good. <laughs> he laughed and pulled me into a tight hug. I leaned into him feeling stupidly happy and a bit giddy as it really hit me that I'd just agreed to go out with him. It was official. I'd never really thought things like that mattered, but now that I was actually experiencing it, I could see why it mattered so much to others. Thanks to you, I think I've learned to control my transformations better. Just needed a little motivation. So we're good on the pants front. Glad I could help. Me too. He pulled back and gave me a serious look, capturing my face between his hands. But, for the record, I'm never going to let anything like that happen to you again. Ever. I don't know. I am pretty good at getting into trouble. I grinned and reached up to give a gentle tug to the unruly curls falling in his eyes. He caught my hand and brought it to his cheek, then to his lips. I couldn't tear my eyes away from the sight of him pressing a gentle kiss to my fingertips. I guess I'm going to just have to be very, very vigilant. Uh-huh. That's, um... That's probably for the best. Ooh! Such passionate keys! I like. 
I raised my eyes to his again, and he smiled before pulling me in and kissing me. It didn't take me by surprise this time. It was slow, tender, and everything about it felt right. I let out a happy sigh and pulled him just that much closer. Danny's arm circled my waist, and in the part of my mind that wasn't completely overwhelmed with appropriately gushy happiness, I thought that this was definitely going to be the best year ever. It's the best year ever! <laughs> Yay! We did it, everybody! Oh, my goodness, what a ride indeed. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed that very much. I... I have some questions, like... Where the heck was Derek when Sean just got, like, the crap beaten up out of him? <laughs> For instance. Uh, I'm sorry we didn't have, like... One last interchange with Sean and Derek, like, kind of just settling things once and for all, um, confronting them about what they had done to her. But I'm, I'm glad they're, they're gone <laughs> for, <laughs> for right now. I'm hoping they're, they're just gonna figure that out. And I'm, I'm curious why we didn't hear more about Rachel, like whether she, like how much she knew about what Liam was doing. Um, if she was having any repercussions from that. I mean, we did hear that the clan is just on very thin ice, but... Considering how much, uh, exchanges we had with Rachel. And other than that, I really like that we had more time spent with Allie. I will say... man... It's kind of weird. I like... I, I like Danny more than Corvin, as far as, like, the romance stuff, even though Danny was, like, insistent on falling on his sword as a martyr at the worst possible time. But everything else, he was, like, super sweet and a gentleman and just, like, the best boyfriend ever, aside from that one thing. Um, but I kind of weirdly, like, Corvin's story better? Like, the, the plot? I don't know how to explain it. Like, the... I like that all the characters were involved, including Kara in Corvin's route. I liked that there was a lot more interaction between Spencer and Nora in Corvin, so the, the resolution felt better in Corvin's than here? Like, I feel like the, the Spencer-Nora sibling thing just kind of resolved itself very suddenly and quickly. And it wasn't more of a gradual thing. Um, and just in general, like, man, aside from Danny, everybody else was so stereotypically werewolf. And I was just like, oh my god, you guys, you need to just calm down. <laughs> you guys are all just like too extra for me with your werewolf shenanigans. But Danny's lovely. It's almost like an opposite problem. Like, I didn't really mind the Ori in Corvin's route. Like, the, that whole thing was easier to deal with than the werewolf shenanigans. But Danny as a person is much easier to deal with than Corvin is. <laughs> so I've got, like, an opposite problem. I like, like, different things. I like the boy and not, not so much the story on the one hand, and then I like the story more and not so much the boy on the other hand. It's just like a pfft. But anyway, I I think overall I would, I would put Danny above Corvin. That's just kind of a funny, funny situation. But that's just me, anyway. Um, I wanted the endings, actually. Which one did we get? Just remember your pants. Ah, uh, if that doesn't spell a romantic ending, I don't know what would. There you go. Um, like a derp. So we've got four more endings to go for you guys. But it looks like we got the best ending there for Danny, so I hope you enjoyed it. I would love to hear your thoughts on the resolution for Danny's route and what you thought of it overall, and just our boy in general, our sweet, sweet werewolf boy. I really loved him. He is 
the sweetest, and a cinnamon roll, for sure. But things are not all roses and daisies and all that stuff, because now we're going into bad ending territory. So yeah, if you guys are curious as to what those bad ends entail, hopefully I will see you there for that. Thank you though very much again for joining me on this, guys. I had a great time, and until next time, I will see you later.